Hello ladies and gentlemen, on the eve of the new season, I am here to look back on 70 years of Formula One. So needless to say, narrowing it down to my favourite moments of all time wasn't easy. But nevertheless, I persevered, I prevailed, and I succeeded. Here. I'm going to be counting down my top 100 Formula 1 moments of all time. The rules are as follows. One moment per race. So that way I can at least talk about 100 races. But two, I'm only going to be talking about the specific moments in question, rather than analysing the entire race. To make it easier for myself, I've split it into 10 different top 10s. I'll be covering everything from pit stop blunders, race wins, pole positions, last lap heartbreak, and controversial moments. And it all climaxes with my top 10 races of all time. So where to begin? What better place than the race start? For many an F1 fan, there is nothing that excites a fan more on a Sunday than race day. But in this case, nothing excites a fan more than the start of a brand new season. And in 2002, we got just that. Ladies and gentlemen, number 10 in my top 10 race starts, the 2002 Australian Grand Prix. Gives a whole new meaning to a race starting with a bang. The huge collision between Ralph Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello at the start. Seeing this at six, seeing this at seven, it was, it was glorious to see. A total of eight cars were wiped out at the start. Barrichello, Ralph Schumacher, Giancarlo Fisichella, Felipe Massa, Nick Heidfeld, Jensen Button, Olivier Panis, and Alan McNish. Eight drivers wiped out at the start. And like I said, gave a whole new meaning to the season starting with a bang. Number nine now. We fast forward a year, it's round 12 of the championship, and there's still four drivers in contention. It was a chaotic start for the 2003 German Grand Prix. Raikkonen, Kimi Raikkonen, Ralph Furman, and Rubens Barrichello all gone in the first lap. Just like that. But damage to Heinz Harald Frensen and Ralph Schumacher ended up out at the end of the first lap after the damage they sustained in that, in that first corner uh, carnage. Number eight, the 1999 German Grand Prix at the old Hockenheim layout. A layout that was 4.24 miles long. Significantly longer than the current layout of the circuit. A collision between Jacques Villeneuve and Pedro Diniz. 
put them both out of the race right at the start. But of course, as we saw in the previous entry, this wouldn't be the last time that we would see first lap carnage, first corner carnage at Hockenheim. Number seven. Back to the 2003 season, only this time it's round two. Fernando Alonso starting on pole. But the carnage at the start saw Fisichella failing to get into his grid spot properly and having to resort to reversing into it. The Renaults got away cleanly. Schumacher tried to get past Jarno Trulli though, but Trulli was knocked into a spin, dropping him to last. But of course Schumacher had to come in to get his front wing changed. And he also had to serve a drive through penalty as a result. The chain reaction saw damage to Antonio Pizzunia in the Jaguar and Juan Pablo Montoya. Pizzunia rear-ending Montoya, resulting in the latter losing his front wing, uh, rear wing. Montoya lost his rear wing. And as a result of all this carnage, David Coulthard, who had won two weeks beforehand in Australia, managed to secure second place. At the end of the first lap. Going back a couple of years now as we head into the 2001 season. Fisichella again. Having trouble getting into his position on the grid. But that wasn't the only drama before the start of the race. Frensen had a misfire in his engine. The cause? A computer hardware error. And as a result of Fisichella having trouble getting into his starting position, and the rules at the time prevented drivers from being able to reverse into their grid position, the start had to be aborted, thus shortening the racing distance from 56 laps to 55. But that's not the only, but that's not the main portion we're focusing on here for the start, because we're still not done with how chaotic it was. Rain started falling, and everyone started spinning off. Not exactly carnage but definitely a lot of chaos. Because that, ladies and gentlemen, at number six, at number six, finishing the first half of this top 10, was the 2001 Malaysian Grand Prix. Of course, it's not all about having a chaotic crash or absolute drama at the start. Sometimes, in the case of our next entry, it can simply be getting a lightning quick start off the grid. And in this case, we had such a thing happen. Number five, Canada 2005 at the Gilles Villeneuve circuit. The Renaults of Fisichella and Alonso got a lightning quick start and ended up one and two at the end of the first corner. And this was during this was during a season where Ferrari lost all the momentum they had built up over the last six years. And as a result it wasn't as a result Ferrari weren't as competitive as they used to be.
Number four now. Donington Park, 1993. The European Grand Prix. Penultimate season of the great Ayrton Senna's career. Senna didn't get the best of starts, resulting in him dropping down to fifth. But by the end of the first lap, he was already leading. The last car he overtook to take the lead? None other than his great rival, Alan Prost. Into the top three now. Back to Hockenheim, 2001. German Grand Prix. We've seen twice before that we've had first corner carnage in 1999 and in 2003. But right smack bang in the middle of it all was this gem from 2001. The Minardis had to start from the pit lane due to technical difficulties. But the chaos was a little further up the grid. Michael Schumacher had a slow getaway because he had an issue with his gearbox. Drivers having to swerve to avoid him. But Luciano Berti, unable to see the, fer the, strict, the slow Ferrari because of Panis blocking his view. Berti rear-ended Schumacher losing one of his wheels in the process, resulting in the race being red flagged. And the interesting thing is, from the races that I've chosen here, this is the first one to have had a red flag. The first, but definitely not the last. Number two. The big surprise about this one was the fact that it wasn't red flagged due to the amount of carnage that was involved. This, ladies and gentlemen, at number two, is the 2000 Italian Grand Prix. Now, I'm going to briefly mention something shortly. But the race starts. Schumacher managed to maintain a clean getaway off the start. Eddie Irvine ended up having a spin-off, meaning he was unable meaning he was unable to complete one lap of the race. But he wouldn't be the only one that day. There was more carnage heading up towards the second chicane after the Curva Grande. Pedro De La Rosa, Heinz Harold Frensen, Jarno Trulli, David Coulthard and Rubens Barrichello all wiped out before that chicane. Incredibly, it was a safety car, not a red flag. Johnny Herbert also had to retire because of the damage in that collision. But the scariest part about it all was that Frensen's car ended up losing its front right tyre, striking a fire marshal who sadly was pronounced dead later that day. There was more emotion mainly on Schumacher's front because with his win that day it resulted in him reaching a total of 41 meaning he had equaled the great Ayrton Senna in terms of race wins and it would take him another five years for him to equal 
Senna's record for most pole positions. Schumacher did end up breaking down in tears after the race in the press conference. And it just proved that even though these drivers are superstar athletes, they are still capable of showcasing emotion. As we will see many times throughout this list. But before we get to number one, I have an honorable mention that I want to bring up. Russia 2016, not exactly the most action-packed start, but definitely a start that began the downfall of one Daniel Kvyat. His home race, no less. A collision with Sebastian Vettel, not once, but twice. The second collision resulting in Vettel in the wall at turn three and out of the race. That incident resulted in Kvyat being put down to Toro Rosso with Max Verstappen taking his place. Let's recap the top 10 so far before we get to number one. Number 10, Australia 2002. Number nine, Germany 2003. Number eight, Germany 1999. Seven, Malaysia 2003. Mal number six, Malaysia 2001. Number five, Canada 2005. Number four, Europe 1993. Number three, Germany 2001. And number two, Italy 2000. Belgium 1998. It was a very wet day. But yet, despite that, the race started on time. Hakkinen was on pole position. It was absolute pandemonium. The cars involved are as follows. David Coulthard. Eddie Irvine. Alexander Wurtz. Rubens Barrichello. Johnny Herbert. Olivier Panis. Jarno Trulli. Mika Salo, Pedro Diniz, Torano Suke, Takagi, Ricardo Rosset, Shinji Nakano, and Jos Verstappen. Officially, Rosset, Salo, Panis, and Barrichello were all out. They were lasted, they were listed as did not start. And sadly, because the teams only had one spare car, it meant those four drivers were unable to make the restart. Incredibly, there was more carnage, this time at the second start. Herbert, Wurtz and Hakkinen all out. Hakkinen lost control of his car, being hit by Herbert in the Sauber. They were both out. Coulthard ended up colliding with Wurtz, which brought out the safety car. And Wurtz ended up out of the race on the second start as well. It was a real shame, but it did mean that there was a chance that Schumacher, Michael Schumacher, could close the gap to Hakkinen in the battle for the championship. But of course, if you want to be able to, if you want to be able to keep going during a race, you not only need a great car, but you need a strong pit crew at the same time. 
But as this next list shows, the pit crews aren't always invincible, because it's time to talk about the pit stop blunders. An honourable mention to get out of the way first. Canada 2008. Hamilton rear-ending Raikkonen's car, resulting in Hamilton out of the race. Marking only his second retirement in his Formula One career. Number 10. Austria, 2003. Michael Schumacher coming in for his pit stop. The team fueling him up as normal. They change his tyres and yet the car decides to catch fire. Only about five seconds worth of fuel were put into the car. Meaning Schumacher would need to stop again earlier than he would like. Despite this, he still went on to win the race. Number nine. We head for Silverstone. 2011, to be exact. A really unfortunate case of a tyre not being secured. That being one Jensen button for McLaren. Seeing a pit stop blunder happen to you is bad enough. But when it happens at your home race, definitely leaves a bit of taste in your mouth. Number eight, Hungary 2009. Another case of an insecure tire. This time, Fernando Alonso. His right front tire was left insecure. And as a result, it ended up off his car, resulting in him having to come in to change his tyres again. Now this did bring up some very valid concerns, especially given that the day before, Massa was involved, Felipe Massa was involved in a very scary crash that sidelined him for the rest of the season. Staying with 2009 now, and we head to Brazil, the race that saw Jensen Button secure his one and only Drivers' Championship for the Braun team. But of course, we are here to talk about pit stop blunders. Heike Kovalainen was in the pits, followed by Kimi Raikkonen. Raikkonen had damage to his front wing after contact with Mark Webber earlier in the race. Kovalainen was released, despite his fuel hose still being attached to his car. A spray of fuel down the pit lane, and Raikkonen's exhaust ended up igniting the spilt fuel. Thankfully, nobody was injured. And both drivers were able to continue, once the Braun mechanics had managed to get the fuel hose off of Kovalainen's car. Number six now, and we hit the halfway point in this list. And it was a season like no other last year. And my goodness me, did we have an absolute blunderbuss from the Mercedes crew, which is very unlike them. 2020 dubbed the Sakia Grand Prix, using the outer layout of the circuit. George Russell comes in to make his stop. The Mercedes double stack. But George Russell ends up driving off with one of, Russ one of Bottas's tyres. They... They go to change Bottas's tyres, only to realise, wait a minute, Russell just went off with one of Bottas's tyres, right? Uh, yeah, that's correct. So they had to stick the tyres that Bottas had on prior to the pit stop back onto the car, 
and Russell had to come in to get his tyres changed to a, to a proper set. But the sad thing is, this wouldn't be the only heartbreak that George Russell would suffer in this race. And why was George Russell in the Mercedes? Because he was filling in for Lewis Hamilton. After Lewis had tested positive for the virus. Another case of a car going on fire here at number 5. Germany, 1994. Huge splash of fuel on Verstappen's car. His Benetton, to be specific. And not only was the car in flames, but so was Verstappen and some of the pit crew. As a result, Verstappen had to retire from the race. To call it a fireball would be a bit of an understatement. That, because of how much fuel was spilt out of the, f the hose, that effectively... There was only a split second between the fuel being spilt onto the car and the fuel igniting. Pretty scary sight if you were part of the pit crew that day. At number four, another case of tyres not being ready. But the thing with this is that it cost Daniel Ricciardo the race win. Monaco 2016. He was sitting there stationary for what felt like an eternity. Because there was one tyre missing. It was heartbreak for Daniel Ricciardo that day. He had to settle for second. And it wouldn't be until Malaysia that season. That he would get his one and only win of that campaign. A double whammy here, but first, number three. The first time it happened. Do you ever get that moment where you end up in the wrong parking spot? That's exactly what happened here. This, ladies and gentlemen, at number three, is the 2011 Chinese Grand Prix. A terrible mistake for Button on lap 15. By accident, he stopped at the Red Bull garage rather than his own. This resulted in Vettel overtaking him for the lead and eventually the race win. It's the first time, that, it's the first time I'd seen it happen. Somebody stopping at the wrong pit garage. But it definitely wouldn't be the last because at number two, Malaysia 2013. Malaysia 2013. Lewis Hamilton, still early days in his Mercedes career after leaving McLaren in 2012. The funny part about it was, was that Hamilton ended up stopping at the McLaren garage instead of the Mercedes garage. The funny part about it all, the team said, the McLaren team said, you're more than welcome to come back, you're, you're more than welcome to come by any time. Before we get to number one, let's do a recap of the top 10 so far. Number 10, Austria 2003. Number 9, Silverstone 2011. Number 8, Hungary 2009. Number 7, Brazil, 2009. Number six, Sakia, 2020. Number five, Germany, 1994. Number four, Monaco, 2016. Number three, China, 2011. And number two, Malaysia, 2013. So what's the biggest pit stop blunder of all time for me? Well, look no further than a race that caused controversy 12 months after it happened. Number one, Singapore, 2008. 
Nelson Piquet Jr. had a crash, which would then turn out to be a deliberate crash to help Alonso. The rules at the time stated that until the pit lane, until it was safe to do so, the pit lane had to be closed to allow the field to close back up. The pit lane was open. Felipe Massa coming in, changed his tyres, fueled up his car and drove off without and drove off with the fuel hose still attached to the Ferrari. He had to stop at the end of the pit lane and the Ferrari pit crew had to sprint from their garage which was at the top all the way to the end of the pit lane to get the fuel hose off. And as a result of this costly mistake, and bearing in mind Massa was leading at this point, because of this costly mistake, Massa said that the incident with PK and Crashgate resulted in Massa losing the championship that season. So there we go. That is it for part one of my top 100 F1 moments of all time. Join me next time when I'll be going through part two of my top 100 F1 moments of all time, where we'll be going through the top 10 pole positions and the top 10 crashes of all time. Now, as far as the crashes are concerned, I'm not ranking them because of how spectacular they were. Some of these, a lot of these are in place. A lot of these are in here because of how scary some of them were. There are one or two spectacular ones in the list. So, join me next time as I continue counting down my top 100 F1 moments of all time. And until then, I'll see you guys out on the track.